please support me on Patreon. Link is in the description below. In 2018, an academic article by Lisa Littman was published, and its results were shocking. It showed that a very significant factor in becoming trans is simply being around other trans people. The article basically showed that being trans is a social contagion, as gender dysphoria seems to develop rapidly after just being in contact with other people with gender dysphoria. This phenomenon is called rapid onset gender dysphoria, and in addition to the gender dysphoria, it is associated with deteriorating mental health and a worsening relationship with parents, among other things. Or that is how conservatives like to frame the article. In reality, the article has such massive methodolog methodological I always keep screwing that word up methodological issues that it is basically worthless. First off, no trans people participated in the research. Instead, the parents of trans youth were interviewed. All right, already a pretty big flaw if the goal is to see how gender dysphoria developed for young trans people, but things get worse. Participating parents were recruited from four sites, one that could be called transpositive, and the other three, I guess, could be called gender skeptical if I wanted to be generous with my language. With Fourth Wave now describing itself as a safe place for gender skeptical parents and their allies, and Transgender Trend, who say, We are an international group of parents based mainly in the UK, US, and Canada who are concerned about the current trend to diagnose gender non conforming children as transgender. So parents were recruited from sites that had a very strong pre existing bias. Additionally, the survey never bothered to ask parents which site they were recruited from, which is a massive issue in tracking those biases. And you might be asking, why is that such a big issue? Well, let's say we wanted to study how many Americans are pro-gay marriage, and to do polling, we went to one conservative church and three pride parades. Well, I think the way you've recruited have created a massive risk of sampling bias, and I think there is a big risk that you will get results that are not representative of the general population. And here we get into two obvious flaws in this research. Parent polling is not always bad, however, for some health concerns they are more useful than others, mainly if it is something that may be a largely internal process, like a closeted trans person, then there is a significant risk that parents may have no idea when the feelings of gender dysphoria developed, especially if the parents are transphobic, which may cause those children to hide those feelings. Basically, and I hope we can all agree on this, parents do not have perfect information on the identity and feelings of their children. And that gets us into the second major issue. Many parents are transphobic, don't believe in trans people. They don't believe it is a real identity. They think it's a delusion, a mental illness that people are making worse by affirming and supporting. So instead of that gay marriage polling example I mentioned earlier, imagine there was polling on how many parents think the flu is a major health threat. If like 40% of the population thought the flu was made up, and people were recruited specifically from flu-skeptic sites. The only thing this article is useful in telling us about is how parents, many of whom might well be transphobic, would describe the reason for their trans children's gender dysphoria, their social trends, and mental health. But instead of being a study about the parents, the article goes ahead and coins the term rapid-onset gender dysphoria, a phenomenon where youth rapidly become trans by being near other trans people, completely based on the assumptions of parents, instead of just talking to some actual trans people. However, a lot of trans youth coming out after getting to know other trans people isn't surprising to me, and doesn't even begin to prove that meeting those people turned them trans. To me, it seems much more likely that they always were trans and just came out after they felt like they had a safe space to express it. Like, for example, after getting to know other trans people. 
From personal experience, I have never been straight, but it took until I was in my early teens until I first heard the term bisexual to help describe my sexuality, and it wasn't until I got to know more queer people later on that I finally came out. I didn't become a queer in my teens, but that was when I felt comfortable exploring and expressing it. But if you ask my parents, who are quite progressive, they couldn't place when I became a queer. They would probably say I've always been that way since they're based, or they would point to when I came out, even though that would be inaccurate. You could probably get similar results to this article if you asked parents of gay children when their children became gay, especially if you recruited parents from homophobic sites where a lot of them don't believe that anyone can be born gay. The article points out that many parents observed a deterioration of their relationship with their children, which is of course sad, but once again, how did the parents react to their children coming out as trans? Basically, this might just come down to parents being shitty and transphobic. With the same methodology, you could show that dating a person of another race causes your relationship with your parents to deteriorate because your parents are racist. Oh, and this isn't just speculation. The study actually asked how many parents had been called bigoted or transphobic by their children and why, and more than half had disagreed with their children's assessment of being transgender, and a third of them had dead-named their trans kids. And yeah, when stuff like that is going on, it isn't surprising that 57% of parents said that parent-children relationships had deteriorated. Like, what did you expect? I would also grow distant from my parents if that happened. I am not a researcher, but even I understand that you cannot use parent polling on a topic as controversial as trans rights. And if you do, and you decide to poll from sites with a strong bias on the topic, then you have to track which sites the parents were recruited from, so you can see how different parent groups with different biases responded to the same questions. Or you could, I don't know, ask actual trans people for your study about trans people? As is, the article is practically worthless, and rapid onset gender dysphoria means nothing. So, why did I make this video? Well, simply put, it's because this article has become part of the culture war. Rapid onset gender dysphoria is cited often by conservatives who want to use it to show that the left are brainwashing children into becoming trans. And this article was actually cited in Sweden's National Board of Health and Welfare's deliberation when they decided to tighten access to puberty blockers for trans youth. This article is awful. It is academically worthless at answering its initial questions. It is also, in spite of that, one of the most influential studies on trans issues in recent years. I'm sure a lot of people watching this video had heard the term rapid onset gender dysphoria, but not looked into the article itself. And I just wanted to show not just how shaky the foundations of the term rapid onset gender dysphoria is, but rather that it doesn't have a foundation, just a bunch of transphobic parents saying there is one.